you are making the world a better place by listening to the Joy of Living podcast. This is your guide to achieving a more purposeful, powerful, and positive life. Join Barry Shore in unlocking the best version of you and becoming happier, healthier, and wealthier. And now, here's your ambassador of joy, Barry Shore. Good day, beautiful, bountiful, beloved, immortal beings, and good looking people. Maybe you're good looking, so always looking for and finding the good. And you have tuned in consciously and conscientiously today to listen to the Joy of Living podcast with your humble host, Barry Shore. And you tuned in for one reason and one reason only. It's the best reason in the whole world because you care the most in the entire world about you. Why owe you? And that's great because when you become the best you, you make the world a better place. You build more bridges of harmony, you create more joy, happiness, peace, and love in the world. And that's exactly what we're going to be speaking about today with one of the most energetic, beautiful, bountiful, beneficent beings that you'll ever have the pleasure of listening to. Her name is Dahlia and she'll be with us in just a few minutes. So at the moment, I urge everybody and thank you again. Thank you so much for telling your families and friends. And every week we have at least 10 to 20,000 more people. So right now, by the time Dahlia comes on, we'll have over 402,000 people listening. And I ask you one thing, share this with five people. That's it. Just five people. Now, you want to share with 50 or 100, it's up to you. But at least five so we can touch 2 million people around the planet and shift the energy of the planet into the positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant. Because you know, on this show, we discuss the three fundamentals of life. And these three fundamentals are, number one, life, your life has purpose. And when you lead a purpose-driven life, number two happens. In this case, good number two, you go MAD. Now, MAD is a wonderful acronym that stands for make a difference. You lead a purpose-driven life, you make a difference in the world. And the third is to uncover the power in the sequence of everyday words and terms. Simple example, right now, this show is being carried over the internet and millions of people around the world can have access. And if you ask anybody, what does WWW stand for? Invariably, it has to do with the internet. Now, factually speaking, they're correct. However, in our world, the world of the positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant, WWW stands for what a wonderful world. <laughs> and what is a word, right? W-H-A-T. Of course, a tip of the hat and a big thank you to Louis Armstrong for enabling that song to go viral, not just touch tens of millions or hundreds of millions, but billions of people around the planet. So when you use the three principles we're talking about, living life with purpose, going mad, make a difference, uncover the power and the secrets, very the words and terms, the result is you'll be happier, healthier, and wealthier. Who doesn't want that? So an example, smile. When you hear the words of what a wonderful world, what do you do right away? You can't help it. You smile. Now, smile is one of the most important words you're going to internalize, utilize, and leverage in your life because smile stands for seeing miracles in life every day. That's right, seeing miracles in life every day. Now, recently, I spoke to a group of 1,127 people, and I'm telling the story about Barry Shore and telling about seeing miracles in life. And some people raise their hands and say, hey, Barry Shore, Barry Shore, I've been up for hours already. I haven't seen any miracles. And I asked them, are you here? Can you hear? Can you stand still? I can't do that. Can you walk? I can be able to do that. Do you have water to drink? Do you have food to eat? Do you have places to sleep? Do you have family or friends? Every single one of those is a miracle. And what's the proof? Simple proof. A million people didn't get out of bed this morning. You know why? They died. By definition, if you're watching, you're listening, you didn't. Therefore, you have an obligation to live life to the full. Let me tell you a quick story. It's about me. Imagine, if you can, I'm standing up in the morning, completely hardy and healthy, able to leave tall buildings in a single bound. And that evening, I'm in the hospital, totally, completely paralyzed from my neck down. It's called being a quadriplegic. Nothing in the body moved. It was not an automobile accident. It wasn't a spinal injury. Uh, it was a rare disease above my body, and it caused, caused me not to be able to move at all. I can only communicate by blinking my eyes. I was 144 days in the hospital. I was two years in a hospital bed in my own home. I couldn't move. Four years in a wheelchair. 
I had braces on both my legs, my hips, and my ankles. That was progress. Thank God today I'm able to be vertical and ambulatory with the help of a seven-foot walking wand. So I'm a tripod, not a biped. Can't walk up a stair by myself. Can't walk up a curb by myself. And I've helped 12 hours a day, seven days a week. But you hear my voice, positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant, all because of one word, smile. But I got to tell you a funny story. My 80-year-old niece comes over to me a few weeks ago. She says, Uncle Barry, Uncle Barry, can we spell smile? S-M-I-E-L. And I thought about it. Smile it sounds the same. Why not? I asked, how come? She says, because then it would stand for seeing miracles in everyday life. Out of the mouth of an eight-year-old. What was she doing? She was creating the kind of world that she wants to live in. Now, CREATE is a wonderful acronym that stands for Causing Rethinking, Enabling All to Excel. Rethinking. We're going to talk a lot about that today with Wonderful Dahlia. It's what we call a shift in perspective. Now, I'm going to tell you, I've been working with people for more than four and a half decades, very highly accomplished people. And when they come to me, I can tell you, when I talk about shift in perspective, 97.2% of people drop the F in shift and the other stuff happens. You have to be careful with your Fs. And the reality is when you shift your perspective, you'll be able to internalize, utilize, and leverage the six most important words you'll ever learn. And these are choice, not chance, determines your destiny. Choice not chance, determines your destiny. How you choose to respond in any given situation will determine not only the path of your life, but the trajectory of your life. Now, before we bring on Dahlia, I have to warn you, all the new listeners and Dahlia that I use a lot of four-letter words. I even use the four-letter F-U word, and I do it for the shock value when it's fun. Now, of course, the four-letter words that we use, because we live in the world of the positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant are love, life, hope, Free, play, gift, kind, swim. And the four letter F your word is fun. Fun, yes. F U capital N, capital N. Now, right away, some people raise their hands and say, Hey, Barry Shore, Barry Shore. Fun's only spelled with three letters, not in our world. In the world of the positive purpose of power and pleasant, fun is spelled F U capital N, capital N. So after the show, when you see your family and friends, I want you to point your finger, twinkle in your eyes, smile in your face, and say, F U, everybody. Add right away, capital N, capital N, and say, where'd you get that? I said, I listened to Barry Shore on the joy of living head on this amazing person. And now you can talk to them about what you discussed today. And it's going to open up your mind and your heart. And it will be helping millions of people around the planet. So before we bring on Dahlia, I'm going to urge everybody to do something that's going to help you make you healthier and wealthier and happier with two words, the two most powerful words in the English language. And these are, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank stands for to harmonize and nurture kindness. To harmonize and nurture kindness. Kind is a wonderful word that stands for keep inspiring noble deeds. I can't think of anybody, anybody that inspires noble deeds more than the amazing, wonderful Dahlia Kurt. Dahlia, please say hello to 408,922 people around the world. Uh, can I say hello to you first, very sure? Because I feel like I I went through years of education. I went through university. I did two degrees there. And now I sit in front of you and I just feel like I had eight minutes of all the education I need. Thank you very much. Have a great day. <laughs> That's why I invited Dahlia on the show. <laughs> no. <laughs> first of all, um, for those of you who are only listening, you're missing something. You, you have to be able to see this vision of joy, of loveliness, of amazing power in front of you. That's right. That's Dahlia. And if you could just stand up a little bit, I want them to see the T-shirt that you're wearing. Ah! <laughs> it's what the world calls a six-pointed star, what we call the Jewish star, and it has in the middle of it the letter S, for super woman. Super Jew. Super Jews. Okay, so in case you didn't know, what we're going to be discussing today is one of the most important subjects that anybody, anybody and everybody should be educated about. And it has to do with the oldest, extant, continuous following, other people call the religion in the world. And that is Judaism. 
Notice I didn't say Judaism, by the way. Judaism is a study of Judy. Judaism is the study of what we call Judah or Yahadus, the idea of the, not the idea, the reality of the oneness of the creator. And I am deeply, deeply humbled and honored that Dahlia has joined us today. Dahlia is a warrior, a joyous, happy warrior. And what she's going to be sharing with us today should make everybody tingle because when you, you'll be able to find out what one person can do. So I'm just going to tell everybody a couple of things about Dahlia. Number one is she's upbeat, smart, capable, the grandchild of Holocaust survivors, an award-winning radio talk show host, international speaker, a syndicated columnist. When she posts on X, which used to be called Twitter, almost 2 million people every day listen to what she has to say. They don't always agree. No. Oh, by the way, most of the time they don't. doesn't matter. She's causing a ripple in the world. She's shifting the energy of the planet into goodness, into kindness. So without further ado, first of all, Thank you for being here, wonderful Dahlia. Let's just jump right in and talk about something that, of course, begins with your forebears, your grandparents, and especially your father. You're in the country called Canada. Mm -hmm. Now, well, most where people, was Canada? I don't know right now, but yes. Right. So most people, when they think of Canada, and especially when I was traveling around the world in my misspent youth, in my 20s, when somebody saw somebody from Canada, you say, wow, nice people, it's a free country, it's open, it's wonderful. That's what Canada was. Would you tell us what's going on in Canada today, especially, especially vis-a-vis -vis Jews? I think just by telling you, I wish I knew what was going on in Canada, quite honestly, but just by telling you what I do every day, is I'm investigating terrorists and I'm not investigating the ones who are in the Middle East. I'm investigating the ones who are right here in Canada, terror cells that have infiltrated much of our systemic infrastructure. And you can go anywhere. I live in Toronto, for instance, and you can go anywhere in the city pretty much and find vandalism of Jew hate, signs of Jew hate. You can walk outside and trip on a kefia. It's absolutely mind boggling what's been going on. In fact, just today I reported on a person who left Canada, flew to Israel and went to a Moshav where 25 people were killed on October 7th. And he went and wanted to kill too. He took out a knife and they had to neutralize him. So now Canada is no longer just in the business of importing terrorists, but we're now in the business of exporting them too. So what's going on in Canada, the way that I say it is that we've always had fault lines of Jew hate. They run deep and we'll have this conversation in, I'm sure we'll have this conversation today. And we've also imported more Jew hate. And what's happened since October 7th is we had an earthquake. However, as upsetting and as distraught as this has made people and some just absolutely depressed and hopeless, I aim to show people that something good always comes out of an earthquake. And that's mountains because mountains do not rise without earthquakes and so right now we're building our mountains so let me unpack a couple of things because it's <clears throat> at one of the same time terrifying and uplifting as you said i'll use your your analogy uplifting in the sense of the earthquake and the formation of great structures called mountains the ability for a country that was known for kindness, for welcoming, for letting all people live together, and then radicalized in its very essence, in its infrastructure, in the course, by the way, of 
let's say two decades, but certainly the one decade alone. In the past decade, 10 years ago, we're now in the year 2024, just to put this in context, because people will be listening to this 100 years from now. And they'll be laughing and say, thank God that we passed through that phase and things are better. But 10 years ago, 2014, you would not have walked out your door and experienced Jew hatred in every corner. It was a very open city. Now, of course, there's always people who don't like Jews just because there are dumb people in the world. Hello, mm -hmm. stupidity never takes a holiday. <laughs> that's reality. Okay, that's fine. But those are all private matters. Now it's become institutionalized. And I think that's part of what you're sharing with us. The other piece, and this is really why Dahlia is super Jew. Mm -hmm. The essence of the Jew is not just to say, well, I think we will find good in this. The essence of the super Jew is there is good at the moment and we will uncover it. We will showcase it and we will join together with those people who are not necessarily Jewish by birth, but are aligning themselves with Jews because they understand that those who bless Jews will be blessed. Those who curse Jews will be cursed. And that is a biblical imperative. <laughs> and there are billions of people around the world who trust the Bible. Am I right on that, Dahlia? I, Barry, I'm never going to argue with you. I've known you for 16 minutes and uh, maybe 10 previous minutes prior to today. And you are not a person, you're somebody that I absorb from, I don't argue with. <laughs> but, you know, the only thing I'd say is it's not quite 2024. I feel 1939, 1940 right now. And I didn't live those years. But in my book, for instance, I uh, wrote my book, Dear Zionist. Dear Zionist, you're not alone. By the way, everything, everything you want to know about Dahlia and about her works and the things she does, it's all in the show notes. So you don't have to write anything down at the moment. And I urge everybody, just go to barryshore.com and look at the show notes. Get involved because Dahlia is the point of the spear. She yeah. is super Jew in the most positive, purposeful, powerful, pleasant way. She's a joyous warrior. Well, I said I'm not going to argue with you, so I accept. But so two of the things that I do, I talked about investigating terrorism. So I fight and light. These are my two objectives right now. So I fight for Jews. I fight for democracy. I fight to save Israel. I fight to save Western civilization. Because anytime you have Jew hate, you also have democracy hate. You have the hate for Western civilization. The other thing is I want to give people that hope and that light so that they could find their inner strength to fight this too. So in my book, Dear Zionist, You're Not Alone, these are 18 letters of hope and light. They're conversations I've had with Holocaust survivors, Zionist war heroes, and these people were up against the greatest darkness that you cannot imagine, and they still triumphed over it. And as I was writing this book, I felt as though when I was reading their stories about the Jew hate they were experiencing, it was stories from 1939, 1940, 1941, 42. And I'm thinking they're describing, and I have chills as I say this, they're describing present day. I could have been writing about present day, Canada, US, anywhere really. And I thought I better write quickly. So I started the book on the first day of Purim and I finished it by the end of Purim, which is a holiday, again, that we celebrate because of our conquest against all odds. And we will be celebrating another holiday about our conquest against all odds. And I think that a book like this, even though I call it Dear Zionist, for instance, it could be called Dear Person, and it would still resonate exactly the same with anybody it doesn't matter who you are, but I called it Dear Zionist because that's just another part. Words are very important to you, Barry. Obviously, I see this. I hear it. And they are trying to take that word from us and weaponize it against us. And I will not have that. <laughs> not on my Wait word. a minute. I did this. It's so beautiful. I will not 
have that. This is the when a voice opens up from a determined human being, there is nothing that can stand against the will of a good, honest, hardworking, dedicated human being. Dahlia Kurtz, we love you. Now, on that high note, I will tell everybody that people love our show and they sponsor us and we have sponsors. We wouldn't have them on if we didn't vet them and think they're good for you. So we're we're going to take a brief break. Don't go away. There's more Dahlia on the other side and you want her because she is so filled with life. We'll be right back after this brief message. Don't go away. We Americans take about 20,000 breaths every day. And we spend an average of 90% of our time indoors. Now, the indoor air that we breathe can be up to 100 times more polluted than outdoor air. That's according to the Environmental Protection Agency. Indoor air pollutants can cause respiratory systems like sneezing, congestion, scratching throat, and even more serious health problems like lung and heart disease. So what's the solution? Is there a solution? The answer is yes. I'm here to tell you about Air Doctor, the air purifier that helps filter out 99.99% of dangerous contaminants so your lungs don't have to. This includes allergens, pollen, pet dander, dust mites, mold spores, and even bacteria and viruses. I'm going to make a confession. I use it, and we love it. Air Doctor comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you don't love it? Just send it back for a refund minus the shipping. Go to airdoctorpro.com. Use the promo code JOY, J-O-Y, and you'll receive up to $300 off air purifiers. Exclusive to my podcast listeners, you will also receive a free three-year warranty in any unit. That's an additional $84 value. So go and get this special offer now. Go to airdoctorpro.com, A-I-R-D-O-C-T-O-R-P-R-O.com, airdoctorpro.com, and use the promo code JOY, J-O-Y. You will thank me. Bye now. Good day, beautiful, bound to be loving immortal beings and good looking people. Maybe good looking because you're always looking for them, finding the good. We found good in abundance. Our cup runneth over with good. Her name is Dahlia Kurtz. She happens to be resident in a country called Canada. Really, she's a resident of the world because she's fighting for you. You, that's right. The ability for you to be able to listen to these wonderful, uplifting words, these words that animate, no matter where you are in the world. You could be in Pakistan, you could be in India, you could be in China, you could be the most oppressed place in the world, Canada even, and realize there's hope. She used that word, hope. Hope is a wonderful acronym, wonderful Dahlia, that stands for helping others progress every day. That's you. You bring hope to the world. I'm going to give everybody a brief, my brief uh, explanation of Zionism, because the word itself has become, as you said, weaponized even against us. That's how evil the left is. That's how evil Marxism is. That's how evil haters are, radical Islamists. That's how evil they are, that they try to use words of goodness against. What is Zionism on the most simple level? Zionism is, Zionism is the essence of the Jewish people for thousands of years, thousands of years, longing and being in our own homeland that is a place called Israel, and we are the indigenous residents of that place for thousands of years. It is not a new idea, unless you consider thousands of years new. Zionism is endemic in part it is the essence of the jewish spirit there is no separating judaism and zionism As a matter of fact you just had i believe it was in toronto an interesting event uh headed by a wonderful person named douglas murray i was there uh, i was at that event okay and if you don't know about douglas murray and the monk debates m-u-n-k again it's in the show notes it's worth it to listen to because he's articulate He's capable, he's smart, 
and he uses the most powerful logic and emotion to make people understand how important it is to know that if you're anti-Zionist, you're anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic. And therefore, you are therefore pro-Zionism, you're pro-Jewish. And pro-Jewish means, in your words, Dahlia, saving democracy and Western civilization. So I didn't realize this. Tell us about what it was like to be there in the audience and feel the information, the input coming from people who are not necessarily born Jewish, but however, fully understand that we're in the front line and the tip of the spear in this battle for Western civilization. Right before I do that, I also want to bring up another point because you brought up Douglas Murray and how he's not Jewish. And it it is, you know, from the moment I, I heard Douglas Murray speak and defend Israel the way he does, I felt indebted to him because this isn't a normal feeling. I, I haven't experienced this much in my life to hear somebody who's not Jewish so vehemently defend us. And when I wrote my book, I put in a quick Zionist detection test. And <laughs> anyone can take this. So here's here's the test. And you can you can give this to your friends, your five friends that you send this podcast to. I say six just because six is my favorite number. So maybe send it to six friends, just this podcast. If you want to know if you're a Zionist, answer this. Do you believe that Israel has the right to exist? Yes, that's all it is. Right. That's all it is. That's all it is. Right. And when Douglas Murray was having this conversation, it was uh, against Mehdi Hassan and Gideon Levy, and it was extraordinary to watch. He was with Natasha Hausdorff, who is a power. She should be called Natasha Power Hausdorff. She is sensational, absolutely wonderful, and Douglas was on stage calmly. Uh, strategically, methodically, going through his introduction, and you can hear him get to the crescendo. It was melodic. In the way that you speak, you make it mellifluous, and you add something to it, and that really captures people's attention. Then when it was time for Mehdi to do his introduction, the way that he started, he, was, he wasn't having a debate. He was campaigning against Douglas and he was yelling at the audience. His energy was all the way up here, but not in a good stratosphere. It was, yes, it was almost like it was all the way down there, but you just felt this coming at you. And to me, that was very symbolic of how we're experiencing the world right now. You have the people who are being rational and methodical and not talking at you, but trying to connect with you. And you have the other people who are yelling and screaming and trying to not use the truth, but manipulate words, manipulate situations, invert things in order to get other people to side with them. And so just watching that debate was just a microcosm of what's really happening in the world today. And Douglas's hair was on point the entire time, not even a strand moved. It was really magnificent. You did mention uh, a person, I don't even like using his name to give him- Any credit? Yes, but he's Israeli. And it, 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 it's interesting to note that the Jews are a complex people. <laughs> there are, in any group of people, there are people who literally hate their own people. Mm -hmm. Hate is a much more easily aroused emotion, Dahlia, yes. than love yes. and kindness. Love and kindness take work. I call the four-letter word ending with K. It takes work. Hate is easily aroused. And it is in symbolic in what you just said. It expresses itself as anger. You're mm -hmm. shouting, mm -hmm. screaming. The more they scream and shout, they think they're winning. And it's just the opposite. Exactly. 
there was one point at which uh, that person whom you wish not that we name, so I don't need to, but he said that Israel was the most corrupt regime in the world. In the world. Chooses to live there his entire life. I don't call these... I, I've heard people use the term self-hating Jew. I call them suicidal Jews because it would not make a difference to Hamas if anybody would have pulled out a little letter when they were there on October 7th and say, wait, let me read you my speech, like the Oscar <laughs> winning speech. Let, let me read you my speech. I really, I, I, I reject myself. I reject everything that has to do with me. Will you spare me now? It wouldn't make a difference. These are suicidal Jews. And I, I, I'll say it again and again, but it is, it is never about Jew hate. It, it always goes to the hate for democracy. But Israel is the only democratic country in the Middle East, and it has ties to Canada and the US and the Western world. And so that is the link. If you can delegitimize Israel, then you can weaken Western civilization. And that's exactly, you could see it globally coordinated right now. That's exactly what's happening around the world. I mean, when I'm looking at, there's a, there's a school board in Toronto and this has, this is our biggest school board. It's the Toronto District School Board. And it has basically illegalized Jewish history. So if you were to say in school, Barry, that, Jews are indigenous to Israel, you would be considered racist, racist against the other children at that school. So they have actually illegalized Jewish history in that school system. And I say this because this didn't just happen in Toronto. They tried to do this in New Jersey, in Philadelphia, in other cities across Canada and around the world. This is a coordinated, globalized attack. And this is a an attack on democracy. And if people don't start to speak up, then what happens is, I think, people think if I speak up, they're gonna come for me first. But if you don't speak up, I can guarantee you that they will come for you. And when they come for you, it will be more brutal than you can imagine. You know, so many people who come to me and they ask me, as I help people fight Jew hate, and the same thing, I've discovered our biggest problem, and it's not Hamas, it's not Hezbollah, it's not all of this propaganda. Our biggest problem is what everybody says to me. Everybody says to me, please keep me anonymous. And I do. I honor that. But the problem is anonymity is fear. Fear is our biggest problem. And that is why 50% of my message might be the words that I speak or write, but the other 50% of my message is the fact that I put my message next to my face. I put my message with my real name. And this is a big part of super Jew for me too, because it seems like, well, it's just like a mug and it's just a shirt. It's just a clothing line. It's not about that. It's about stepping out of your anonymity and stepping into your super Jew. And the same people, the very people who say to me, please keep me anonymous, were the very first people to buy my shirt. Because there's something about, it's almost like a costume, and there's something about putting it on. A mug and David is a protective shield for Jews. But there's something about putting it on where you can almost feel as though it adds to, you know, this alter ego type of thing. It's a costume. It's You're not really identifying yourself, but you are. And I've walked through mobs of Hamasniks wearing this shirt. I've stood face to face with people who have threatened to kill me, who have threatened to violently rape me. And I got this even on camera, on film. And you know, you speak about hate and how it's so easily propagated and how it's so easily created. But there's something that you can do with hate. If you know how, to stand in your own power when somebody sends this hate energy towards you 
you can use that and take it and use that energy against them because all of that hate I received this day in particular, I'm speaking about the walk with Israel in Toronto, 50,000, 50,000 people, Jews and non-Jews alike showed up for it. But these Hamasniks were there, these peace loving people. And I was able to take what they did because just a couple of days before they tried to shut my voice down online, a campaign of thousands and thousands of people put me up as a target to shut down my voice to report me. I'm still from June 5th, my picture is still pinned to the top of many of these social media feeds saying that I'm a target. So they shut down my voice by reporting me so much. But I used all of that hate they were giving me on that day. And I was able to take all of those videos, all of that hate that they put my way and amplify my voice so much more, millions and millions more people. And today, those posts that they put up about me, that I'm a target, are still at the top of those feeds pinned. I'm still getting death threats. I'm still getting rape threats. Now they're threatening my family. They threaten my dog. I'm not afraid for me when I walk out, but when I walk out with my dog, I make sure that I walk in a way that I'll get between him and any other person in case somebody wants to kick him or stab him or run him over. They would have to go through me first. And we're both, yes, probably about the same size. He's 25 pounds. I might be a little bit more. I'm a five. <laughs> five, five. The but, hair alone is 25 pounds, right? Yeah, the hair. I mean, my neck is... Uh, but the thing is, you can take the hate, and there's a lot of it right now, and people are afraid of it, but you can take that hate, and you can take the energy from it, and that's what I'm learning. I'm learning to do, and I'm getting better at it, and as they hate me more and more, and they're wasting their time targeting all of this hate against me, I'm also taking that hate, and it is backfiring on them all over the place do not be afraid because when you learn how to harness hate you can create so much more love and kindness <laughs> anybody right now who is not leaning in and pressing their nose against their earphones in the screen and not loving this and shouting out thank you thank you thank you dahlia <laughs> You're not alive. Wake up. This is, and again, we're not, this is not just for Jews. No. I don't care what your background is. This is a message of hope for humanity. It's so interesting you say about this energy and the transformation and using it in the most positive way. So there's a very famous uh, martial art form called jujitsu. Yes. And the basis of jujitsu is to use the enemy's energy against them. Now, notice what we call it. We call it jujitsu. My so, little nephew became um, one of the best in the world at jujitsu, and he was the smallest. He was the smallest guy in his categories, and he usually went up one weight level, even though he was so tiny. He was fighting for Israel, and the thing about jujitsu is. Even though he was so small, he was able to always use his opponent's weight and size against them. So again, taking the energy from the exactly what you just pointed out in your analogy, you take the energy away from the other side. This is why we love you. I'm so happy that you're here. I, I created an acronym for the word Jews while we were on the break. You want to hear it? Yes, please. Jews, J-E-W-S. Joyous, expressive warriors successfully. <laughs> I love it. That's fantastic. I have to tell you, I don't know, uh, you know, you're the one gearing this podcast, but can we talk about the mezuzah story today, Barry? Do we have time for a mezuzah story? Let's, you're, it's your world. I'm only here to serve. Well, let me tell you this then. You're not here to serve. You're here to enjoy it with me. So... I found out about some homes in Toronto, in the Toronto area, that were removing their mezuzot. They were taking their mezuzahs off their door because women in hijabs were going, especially in the Jewish areas, they were taking pictures and they were noting with a clipboard what people were assuming were the homes with mezuzot. 
And so I decided police have not been protecting us. Jews do not feel safe in Canada at all. We've had schools that are shot at and Jewish elementary school firebombed, synagogues are vandalized, just it's regular happenstance here. And so because police aren't protecting us, I have a better way to protect us. And I took to X, Twitter, and I shared this picture of somebody's home where the mezuzah used to live. You can see that it had its outline where the paint was a little bit darker. And I said, I have an idea how we can protect each other. Jews and non-Jews alike, in solidarity, everyone puts a mezuzah on their doorpost. And the number of people who replied within that week, taking pictures of a mezuzah, non-Jews, who put it on their door in solidarity, that offers so much more protection than police can ever offer us. That is strength in unity that doesn't have to come from bullets. It doesn't have to come from bombs. That comes from standing together, hand in hand, mezuzah by mezuzah on every door. And those are the things when people say, well, no, I can't make a difference. You absolutely can. You can just take a mezuzah and put it up on your door. You can even fake a mezuzah if you don't know where to buy it, but it's pretty easy to find. And you can just take any little thing and put it up on your door and let people think it's a mezuzah if you don't know where to get one. I don't want to save places online because I don't want to advertise for big companies that don't talk about their hostages that are still uh, being held by Hamas. But there are so many ways that people can make a difference. Even when somebody sends me a message and thanks me for what I'm doing, I'm working 20 hour days, seven days a week, making close to zero dollars an hour since October 7th. And when somebody sends me a message and they say, thank you, that is inspiration for me. That is energy for me. That is strength for me. So there are so many ways that you absolutely can make a difference. And I want people to really understand that. And the thing is, making a difference it's like a drug. Once you see that you've done a little bit of it, you're going to push and push and push to do more, and you're going to do it unconsciously. You're so Dahlia is a mad woman. Remember, mad stands for make a difference. You can make a difference right now. Listen to our <clears throat> sponsors. They love the show. We love them. We think it could be a benefit to you. We'll be right back with more Dahlia. Don't go away. This is riveting. Be right back. <laughs> what if you could shop at your favorite local stores, swipe your current credit card, and get extra cashback rewards? And what if you could also have donations sent to your favorite cause at no extra cost to you? What if this amazing program was absolutely free? and very simple to set up. Well, what if is here. Welcome to Einstein Cares, where your everyday shopping gives you and your favorite cause extra money. It's fast, it's easy and effortless. Good day, beautiful, bountiful, beloved, immortal beings, and good-looking people. If you're good-looking, because you're always looking for and finding the good. If we found good in abundance, Dahlia Kurtz. Again, just go to my website, barryshaw.com. All the information will be there. And she spoke to us just before the break about something called mezuzah. Let me spell it for you. Look it up. M-E-Z, or Z, depending where you are. U-Z-A-H. M-E-Z-U-Z-A-H. Look it up. It can be just a wooden box. You don't have to have the actual parchment inside. Put it up as a reminder that you are in solidarity with the people who are here on the front line saving Western civilization. Saving Western civilization. That's where the Jew is. I want to remind everybody of the people who are challenged in geography, which is a lot of people these days, unfortunately. If you look at a map and you see the continent of Africa and the Mediterranean Sea, and above that is Europe, and then to your right or to the west, we call it, is the beginning of the landmass called Asia, all the way from Morocco, entirely across the entire North Africa, 
all the way into Arabia, all the way into Syria, in Iraq, in Iran, in Afghanistan, thousands and thousands and thousands of miles, all the way up into Turkey, hundreds of millions of people, all Muslim. One place, one place that is the size of the state of New Jersey in the United States of America is what we call Israel. And here's the genius of Israel. It is a home for all freedom-loving people. Jews, Druze, Christians, atheists, anybody, even self, even suicidal Jews. Yeah. They, they take their haven in this one place, which is the beaming of light to the entire world right now. That's the genius of hatred is it always goes, it's, it is the essence of darkness. It goes and tries to put out the light. The light of love will always push aside the darkness of hate. On that line, I want you, my dear beloved Dahlia, and I'm so honored and happy that you're here. Let's talk about what you call the science. I love this. The science of spreading kindness mm -hmm. to fight hate. What is the science of that? You know, it's actually interesting that I learned the science of kindness from a McGill professor. McGill is renowned for not being very kind these days, but a McGill professor who was in Israel with me. And this was years ago before I started on my first talk show. And he has made it part of his life's purpose to understand the actual social science of kindness. And it comes down to this word called swarming. And swarming is about the birds and the bees, just not in the context that you're smiling about right now, very. It's about how birds and bees, they work together in unison without having to speak, without having to communicate. They understand the, coll the collective needs of the other. And the more good that they do to help each other, the more, like when I spoke about uh, moments ago, how you can make a difference and then you start doing it unconsciously. You, you, you just, you, you don't try to, but it becomes like the kindness reflex. That's how I speak about it. It's just a reflex of kindness because you're developing a muscle. That's what kindness is. And so the more that we start to swarm and do one good deed, the more that it will spread. For instance, um, my talk show, I started TGPF, Thank Good People Friday. And I know this is something, of course, uh, TGIF, I wasn't, into, I'm not into the expressions like that, but it was a Friday and I thought, what could I call this? TGPF. And I told people to call in and tell me something nice somebody had done for them that week. I would do this on Fridays on Shabbat. People didn't realize it was for Shabbat, but I would do this on Fridays. And at first people thought I was kind of maybe mad, but not in the way that you describe it. And they would say maybe somebody mowed my neighbor mowed my lawn they did something like this but then one day things changed because you keep you have to train kindness like i said this is a muscle that you develop and so one day a man calls in and he says i'm sitting at my son's deathbed in the hospital he's not going to make it but i want to thank the doctors and nurses for everything they've done for him and it was that call that's changed everything because then I think it connected and it hit and the swarming began. And then a woman calls in and she says, I want to thank my best friend for doing so much for me, even though she has MS and she can't do anything for herself. And she's stuck in one room in her house because she can't navigate it now as her MS is getting worse. And then somebody heard that call and they called in and they said, I want to donate money so that she could renovate her home and then a contractor called in and said that he wanted to be the person to renovate her home and it was things like this that continued on my show and spreading kindness and people would come more and more together and instead of this being a short segment that i would try to pull kindness out of people this turned into not even a friday thing it turned into a daily thing people were doing tgpfs as they called them every single day because kindness is something that we develop 
like muscles and then you start to get just kindness reflexes and then people swarm together and this kindness begins to overtake all of that negativity around you. It really does grow exponentially. And I think that once people can experience it, that's when they truly understand it. If you haven't yet experienced it, you have to be the one to open your mind to be able to do it. I can't change your mind to do something like that. And once you do, I will warn you, the floodgates of goodness, kindness, and purpose open up. And when you have purpose in life, it's amazing how much energy you get. And it's amazing how much energy you're able to give. And you're able to do things People will say all the time, oh, I don't know how, how you do that. I couldn't do that. Or, oh, there's no way. Well, when a mother is saving her baby from under a car and she's able to lift it, she doesn't know how she could do that either. But that comes from purpose. There is so much strength in purpose. And once you start exercising it, you'll see how much stronger and how much more capable you become of things you never realized that you could do. Dahlia, a tsunami of goodness always. Barry, how much time do we have? Because it's a special birthday today, and I want to make sure to bring up a special birthday for Oh, whose birthday is it? It is my dad's birthday, and he is the one who gave me such a gift that I dare not ever waste. Do we have time for the story? We we must make, even if we don't have time, we're making time. <laughs> Hello. Well, years before I was born, my father decided that uh, he wanted to create a better world. What happened is he went to apply to a job in Montreal at a stockbroker firm. He was going to be a floor trader and he was the star candidate. They loved him. But they came to the last question and they said, we have one more question for you. He answered it correctly, but it was the wrong answer. They said, are you Jewish? And then the star candidate turned into the star of David candidate. And they said, sorry, we can't hire you. We don't take Jews. And I'm sure they didn't say the word sorry. And so my father experienced what many Jews at the time in Quebec experienced because there was an unwritten rule that you don't need to hire Jewish people, especially when it comes to handling money. And my dad grew up on the streets of Montreal, beaten up daily just for being Jewish. He went to school and his teacher said, your name is Aaron? No, it's too Jewish. You're going to be Arnie now. And my dad didn't want his children to have to live, his future children, to have to live this life. So my dad decided to fight this. So my dad gets a provincially appointed attorney and that attorney doesn't like Jews. So he never shows up. But on the other side, Brian Mulroney, the future prime minister of Canada representing the defense. And to be fair to Brian, whom we lost a few months back, Brian was always a friend to Israel, a friend to Jews, and compassionate towards my dad. He didn't even stay on that case for the full 10 years. But what happened is throughout those 10 years of my dad's life, I still am not born, throughout those 10 years of my dad's life, death threats, blacklisted, he can't find work, finally gets to the ruling and the judge says, I'm disheartened to say that despite confessions of Jew hate. There's no law that says they can't hate Jews. So I have to award the case to the defense. So my dad lost 10 years of his life and he loses. But millions and millions of Canadians won because my dad's case ended up changing Quebec's civil code. And in turn, my dad was instrumental in changing Canada's Charter of Rights and Freedoms to add protections against discrimination. But that case followed my dad for years because even when my brother and I were born in Montreal, my brother's now beaten up. And I'm a Mudit Jew, a dirty Jew in the streets. I'm a four year old girl. And my parents can't find work. 
They clean homes. They do whatever they can to get by. And my mom scoops ice cream. I'm four years old. I'm hiding food under my bed because I'm thinking, I don't know if we'll have food tomorrow. I clearly didn't know anything about science or bacteria, but I knew that my parents had serious hardships. But the thing about all this is that I grew up in poverty, but with the richest childhood because my parents gave me fight and light. My dad gave me fight and light. And people say, I've had people say to me, wow, you know, history is reliving itself. You're reliving history. You're experiencing the fear that your dad went through. My dad didn't fear anything. And I don't fear this. I'm doing this because I fear what will happen if I don't fight. My dad thought he lost his fight. He was very depressed about the outcome of his case. And he thought he lost his fight. He thought he lost his inspiration. But my dad gave that to me. And that is such a gift. And what a waste it would be if I didn't use that right now. What a waste it would be if I didn't use the gift that my grandparents gave me from surviving the Holocaust. What a waste it would be if I didn't use the gift that all of these Jews who came before us who survived the Holocaust, Israel, who's always been up against all odds, still defeating the people who tried to eradicate it. What gifts? We cannot waste these gifts. And so I want to wish an extra happy birthday to my father, who I think he, he was afraid when I started fighting. Then he was scared because he knew what he experienced and he didn't want his daughter to go through blacklisting and death threats. And he was right. He saw me go through this. But now my dad is seeing the light and he's seeing what that fight is turning into. And when I talk to him, his nostrils flare. I mean, I can't exactly see them because we FaceTime and I see his ear when we speak because he hasn't mastered the art FaceTime yet. But my dad's nostrils are definitely flaring. And if you want to know when my dad is happy, it's when those big boys open up. So happy birthday, Papa. Woo! Today, July 22nd, is his birthday? Yes, it is. Okay, we're going to do something amazing. Okay. I'm going to send it to you as well, but we're going to do something amazing that hundreds of thousands of people are going to experience now for wonderful Aaron Kurtz. Is his last name? Yes. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Mm, hello. We have an intergalactic singing telegram for wonderful Aaron. Can you please stand by? All the planets in alignment. Eight plus billion people in harmony. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy, 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 happy birthday. Happy, 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 happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy. <laughs> Dahlia. Very. Three quick questions. I'm sorry yep. to even say we have our time is coming to a close. You ready? Three quick questions. Number one, will you come back again? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Number two, Dahlia, you have only 80 seconds to answer this. What is your most fervent desire? For us to survive. And thrive. And thrive. First, we need to survive. The second is thrive. But usually if you could make it through... If you could make it through something so difficult that you need to survive it, and you understand this surely, barely, Barry, if you could make it through something that you need to survive it, you will end up thriving. 
Because any time you need to survive, if you make it through that time, you thrive. Third question. <clears throat> May I give you a hug in front of 411,912 people around the world? Let me, tell you what, let me tell you what hug stands for. Ready? Heartfelt, unlimited, giving. One, two, three. <laughs> and thank you, dear Lord. You're listening to The Joy of Living with your humble host, Barry Shore, an amazing guest, Dahlia Kurtz. And you're listening to the show because it's not about Dahlia, wonderful, amazing being she is, a Barry fabulous fellow. It's all about <laughs> you. Y-O-U, you becoming the best you, becoming a kinder, gentler, wonderful, loving you. And that happens when you use the three fundamentals of life. Number one, your life has a purpose, like Dolly has been saying. Lead a purpose-driven life, you go mad. Mad stands for make a difference. And the third fundamental is to uncover the power and the secrets of everyday words and terms. You'll be happier, healthier, and wealthier. WWW, what a wonderful world. Smile, seeing miracles in life every day. As my eight-year-old niece says, seeing miracles in everyday life create the kind of world you want to live in, causing rethinking, enabling all to excel. And then you'll be able to shift your perspective, keep the F in place and shift your perspective. You internalize, utilize, and leverage the six most important words you'll ever know. And they are choice, not chance, determines your destiny. Like Dahlia, choose to respond in a positive, purposeful, powerful, pleasant way. Use the good four-letter words. Love, life, hope, free, play, gift, swim, kind, and tell the world to F you, capital N, capital N. And when you do that with a twinkling eye, smiling, you get their attention. Say, where'd you get that? He said, listen to Barry Shaw and the joy of living. He wants to teach the world to F you, capital N, capital N. And then you'll be able to go mad. And so a blessing for wonderful Dahlia and Barry. Go forth. Live exuberantly. Spread the seeds of joy, happiness, peace, and love. Go mad. Go make a difference. Dahlia, don't go away. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Joy of Living podcast. Now that's another step towards your healthier, happier, and wealthier life. Never hesitate to do good in the world, no matter what the situation. Join us for another upbeat discussion next time at BarryShore.com. And be sure to leave a rating and subscribe to the show to get more conversations like this. And remember to share it with your family and friends too. See you on the next episode.